No, Photoshop for iPhone is not really Photoshop, but it is the best photo editing app for the iPhone, period. Is it perfect? No, it's not. And needless to say, it's nowhere near as powerful as the real Photoshop. But if you like editing photos on a small screen and you wanna be able to trade images back and forth with real Photoshop in real time, it can't be beat. All right, so here I am looking at my cloud documents. I'll tap on this guy, which comes to us from the Dreamstime image library. Link in the description. I quite like this image, but it's not tall enough. So I'm going to tap size in the bottom right corner, and then I'll tap the triple dot, and I'll go with scale from center so that I'm uncropping both the top and the bottom of the image and then i'll tap generative expand and i'll tap generate i could have entered a prompt of course but generally speaking right how often do you really want to do that whereas what i'm going to get here is some new detail now from far away it looks pretty good look and we got some 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 green stuff up there at the top so that's cool and i have the standard three variations including some more tomatoes top right where things aren't working out so well is at the seams and you can already tell from here but if i go ahead and zoom even farther in this tomato right there that's a real tomato this tomato below is not and we have a seam between the original detail and the new gummy stuff now fortunately even though that's where things top out on the iPhone, you can still take advantage of the much more powerful Photoshop running on a desktop. And so here are my three variations inside the properties panel. And I'll just go ahead and click on enhanced detail, which is an option that does not exist on the iPhone, but with any luck, will do a better job of matching that original resolution. And so here we have before, and this is after. Not perfect, but definitely an improvement. And the same goes for that new greenery that got added in the top left corner. This is before. This is what we got from the iPhone. And this is what we get from Photoshop running on the desktop. And the great news is that the two are absolutely compatible with each other. So you're not going to lose any data as you switch back and forth. And by the way, if you're appreciating this information, please go ahead and subscribe and by all means, turn on notifications. All right, now let's take a look at one of Photoshop's core competencies. It's reason to live, if you will, which is selecting and compositing. Adobe has actually been pretty darn ambitious where the iPhone version is concerned. It's in better shape than the first version for the iPad was. However, I think they're struggling with ease of use as we're about to see. And so what I wanna do is select these guys and put them against a different background. I've got this little layers icon right there. And if I wanna just devote the screen to my layers, just to see a panel, then I can tap on that left pointing arrowhead. Now, I want to use an automated selection tool that's analogous to the object selection tool inside Photoshop proper, but that can't see more than one layer at a time. It can't see the composite view. And so I'd like to be able to group these layers together, which I can do, but then the feature won't work. So what I have to do instead is take this generative expand layer, tap on its triple dot. This is where I think things get pretty gnarly. I want to merge down which makes a lot of sense to a person who's been using Photoshop forever. But if you're new to the product, I would not think so. Anyway, I'm gonna tap merge down like so, and now we have a single layer that we can work with, and I'll tap on select area. Now here, things are very impressive and easy to use, by the way, kinda. And so we've got all these different selection tools, so everything from the magic wand tool, the rectangular marquee tool, the quick select brush right there, and the, the analogy for the object selection tool, which is tap to select, which is great, but it starts off with a bunch of subjects as if they're placeholders for people that don't exist inside this image. And then we have 
these previews for everything that does exist. So I can tap on the orange to select it. And I could tap on this bowl of pistachios right there. That's great. And I can tap directly on things like the bread or the tomatoes right there if I want to, to select them. However, there's so many different things that it's found, including little tiny slices of salami, that I think my better approach would be, and again, I'm not sure this would make sense if you hadn't used Photoshop before, deselect the image and then select ground instead, which is everything but the stuff that you want to select, right? It's the background. And then I would tap this invert icon right there in order to invert. So again, this stuff is standard practice. If you know Photoshop, if you don't, I wonder in any event, I'll go ahead and convert this now to a selection outline by clicking on the check mark. And now we have marching ant style selections. Now I want to convert it to a layer mask. So I tap on that icon right there. Now at this point, I want to introduce a new background. And so I'll tap on the plus icon, bottom right corner, and notice I've got a, a few different things that I can add, including an empty layer, but a fill layer, that's going to be a solid fill. By the way, solid color. We do not have gradients inside this version of the software. We do have type. A lot of controls too, like I'm not going to show you, but you, you can play with type if you want to, and you can create strike through styles, stuff like that, but you can't create a drop shadow at this point in time, which was true for Photoshop on the iPad originally as well for the first several years, actually, of the product. It didn't have drop shadows. Now it has drop shadow and stroke and that's it. And I just want to grab somebody on the engineering team and say, is this really super complicated? Is this like brain surgery to create layer styles? Because why aren't they here? We do have adjustment layers, including curves. So, you know, the, the compli complicated stuff where that's concerned, an image layer. So that's what I want. You can add from photos, you can read, you can see everything here, including, you know, Adobe stock and generate image. I would show that, but that's not gonna match the resolution and it's not special. Just about every app out there these days on the iPhone can do some sort of generative stuff. You can take a photo, you can actually shoot a photo on the fly or grab something from Lightroom or from your files. So, that's an option, but what's missing here? Cloud documents. The service that Adobe provides cloud documents is not on this list. So, you know, you may be working differently than I am, but what I'm going to do is a workaround here. I'll tap on a little home icon, then I'll go down here and grab this guy because it's is the image I want to use, and I'll tap and hold. Now, this is cool because the iPhone version of the software does support the clipboard, whereas the iPad version did not forever and ever. And so I'll tap copy, so that's great. And then I'll go back to the version of the image that I'm working on and I'll tap and hold on an empty area, very important, and then tap paste. Now is where things I think just get kind of mind boggling. Obviously I wanna move this thing around and so I drag and it doesn't move, weird. And I also want to scale because it's not big enough, right? I've got that checkerboard transparency. So you think tap size in the bottom right corner, but that will take you to the cropping options. You need to know that scaling and movement inside Photoshop it falls in a category of transform. And so you tap again on the image and you tap transform down here. How would you know to do this? This is why I just seems so not intuitive. Put it that way. And now I can drag this guy around. Hey, real quick. The single most practical thing about Photoshop on iPhone is the development module, AKA Camera Raw. Shoot a raw image, make a few adjustments, and then bring it into Photoshop via cloud documents. To learn more, join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now back to Photoshop pros and cons, for the iPhone. Now, you may recall, those of you who have been at this for a while, years and years ago, the marketing team told us how important it was that we need to scale by default proportionally from now on. And you press the shift key if you wanna override that. Whereas here inside the iPhone version of the software, you can squish the image if you drag a side handle or a top or bottom handle. If you want to scale proportionally, you would think you tap this little guy right there, but that just scales proportionally with respect to the center, which may not be what you want to do if you want to scale 
not with respect to the center, but you want to scale proportionally, then you have to go wide, in my case, and drag a corner handle is the way to do it but thank golly I'm, I'm being very sarcastic here but thank golly they made sure that we have perspective in version 1.0 of this software but not drop shadows anyway i don't care if this guy gets stretched well i definitely don't want perspective you know what i don't care if we have some perspective either but i am going to switch back to scale and rotate and drag this guy down it's a pretty forgiving background and just click the check mark right there in order to add it and now what i need to do is move it and back of course so i'll tap this little layer doohickey right here tap again on it it's just easier when you're dragging things up and down to drag and hold by the way so you have to do a hold there and then i just want you to see that the charcuterie layer right there has a little tiny layer mask do you see that and you can modify the mask do you see these modify mask options right there but that's going to give you that sub menu of like feather and smooth and make border when's the last time you use the make border command Ugh. anyway i just some of the priorities are just bewildering anyway i don't want any of this stuff so i'll just check out instead i want edit mask but the thing about edit mask is you can't just paint you you can use the quick selection brush right there if you want to but otherwise you're just limited to selection tools even though they're very good actually that's one of the key strengths of this software you can't you can't just do brushwork and if you could you can't control spacing you know what i'm talking about so you get those really blobby brush strokes and so we don't have a quick mask mode and we don't have a selection brush and oh my goodness okay so i think i've expressed myself at this point i think what we have here is a reasonably capable compositing tool that's also quite challenging to use all right what really counts however is the quality of the results and as we can see back at the desktop things are kind of hit or miss the bread looks great the pistachio bowl could be smoother the plate oh my goodness that looks very very nice the fruit not so much very lumpy you could smooth that out using the smooth function there on the iphone however it's the tomatoes that are an absolute disaster now what we don't have on the iphone that we do have on the desktop is the selected mask workspace so it's great that you can move back and forth between the platforms at which point i'll just go ahead and dial in some settings i'll change the radius value to 10 who cares i'll take the smooth value up to 30 because we do need some smoothness and i'll increase the contrast to 50 percent at which point things look much better not perfect but so much better than they did before but here's what we need and this seems so simple so trivial from a design perspective, is the ability to grab the brush tool. You do have a brush tool, it sucks, but you have one. You need tighter spacing so that you can paint smooth results. And then it'd be nice if you have pressure sensitivity. That doesn't really exist on the iPhone, although it does in good notes. So go figure. And then I would just paint inside of the layer mask, which is not possible on the iPhone, but does these tomatoes a world of good. Let's end on a bright note, shall we? Specifically retouching, which I think is handled quite nicely here on the iPhone. I'll tap retouch and switch to the remove tool which uses pattern recognition it is not currently generative more on that in a moment and i'll just go ahead and zoom in on this detail right here now i don't want to harm the original image so i'll create a new layer and then i'll tap on the triple dot notice a couple of options brush smart scale will keep the brush the same size even as you zoom in and out you may find that helpful sample all layers allows me of course to paint from all layers onto the active one don't tap off the menu to hide it you need to tap the triple dot otherwise you'll start painting as i'm going to right now and i'm just going to surround this detail it shows up as magenta which doesn't work that great for skin tones but notice it did ah. A fairly decent job. Let's say you want something more sophisticated, such as generative fill. Then 
switch to the select area options. The lasso tool should work nicely. I'll just go ahead and roughly marquee this shell. Notice that I have a little plus sign down here at the bottom so you can add or subtract from an existing selection. I'll just go ahead and add this area right here and then I'll tap the check mark in order to accept that selection outline. It's a little wonky down there in the bottom right corner, but that's okay. I'll tap generative fill and then tap generate. And then a moment later, we have the standard three variations. I think I actually like this final one the best. You know, I have to say, I ended up liking Photoshop for iPhone a lot more than I thought I would. On the plus side, it's an ambitious compositing program. I didn't even show you blend modes, they're all there. And that tap select tool outperforms the object selection tool on the desktop. On the minus side, you can't paint inside a mask or apply so much as a drop shadow. What do you think? Comment down below. And if you like what you saw, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for a tour of how I see myself making practical use of Photoshop on iPhone on a regular basis. Join me at patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.